Hello everybody and welcome back to winnerinaweek.com, a website and series of poker coaching videos designed to provide even novice and recreational players with all the information and means that they'll need to beat up to 80 or 90 percent of all the opponents they'll face at at least the low and middle limits. My name is Dylan and in this sub-series entitled Poker Math Essentials Made Easy, we'll be covering the following topics. The first in this video is bankroll management. That's the equivalent of risk capital management in a trading or investment environment. Uh, the second video will cover then equity, expected value, hand matchups, ranges, and yeah, how probable it is to hit certain flops with specific holdings and also with entire ranges of hands. Uh, the third video then will look into position pot odds, so called break even equity and respective swings uh, over various streets. The fourth video then is a very concise overview of poker statistics. Essentially everything you're going to need for tournament and cash game play. And in the fifth and final video of this sub-series uh, we'll look at very briefly the optimal stats and so-called starting hands charts for no limit and fixed limit hold'em. Some of you may be wondering why I've put bankroll management as the very first topic uh, in the Poker Mass series. And the reason actually is because it is the most important. It doesn't matter how good you are. You can be the best in the world. If you don't adhere to strict bankroll management, you can and most probably will go broke, even if you play perfectly. <laughs> that might sound a little bit crazy. Uh, but it's very much true and the reason is variance which we'll get to here shortly. If you only understand one point uh, in all of these videos please understand the following you must segment your bankroll in order to handle the swings that will occur with mathematical certainty. If you don't get that one it, everything else is actually irrelevant um, you know, proper play, optimal strategy, different tactics, moves, you name it. All that doesn't matter at all <laughs> if you're putting everything you own on the line every time you sit down at a live or online table. So in this video we'll look at exactly how you should segment your bankroll, um, precisely why you should do that, and also how you should do it for um, all the different respective poker types that are out there so-called poker game variants. And with that I'd like to jump right into the outline and start with two quotes from two players I respect a great deal, both with two very different playing styles. So we'll start here with Johnny Chan, a quote that came from the movie Rounders, as well as one from Chris Ferguson. And Johnny says here, quote, don't play over your limit if you can't afford it. That's very important. I see a lot of players sit in the big games. They know they can't afford to be in that game. They put their whole bankroll in the game, and they play scared. They're not playing their game. They're just throwing their money away. Uh, straight from a world champion himself, uh, who certainly has also experienced a few swings in his career. And, um, yeah, if if you're a big Johnny fan, that's, uh, that's something definitely to take to heart. Got a quote from another player here who whose style I perceive is markedly different than Johnny's. Um, as far as I can tell, he's a much more mathematical player. Um, yeah, and again, it's neither good nor bad, neither better nor worse, simply different. And I believe, as far as I know, as far as what's been reported, uh, both these players are winning players in the very, very long term. So, another quote here from Chris Ferguson, and he says, Over the short run, there's a huge amount of luck in poker. But over the long run, you really have to be an expert to do well. So many players fall into the temptation of trying to accomplish a lot and risking too much. You can be a great poker player and go on an unlucky streak, and if you're not very, very careful about managing your money, you're going to lose it all. And so here I'd like to point out uh, Chris isn't saying you can be a, a good poker player or a uh, better than average poker player, but he's saying here you can be a great poker player. And if you catch a run of cold cards, um, 
and or you catch a run of fantastic cards and get sucked out on multiple times over and over again, you can and very often will go broke if you're not very, very careful about managing your money. And that's what it's all about, guys. Um, the reason for that, as I just mentioned, is this most horrible of terms, variance. Uh, and this is the reason why you should be willing to move down a limit. Uh, this is the link here at Wikipedia, and I think we'll just go there very quickly to review that. Again, here's the URL. You guys, when you get a chance, check this definitely, uh, definitely out at your leisure. Um, I will just look at the two main points, and then you guys can scroll through this and, again, go into it in uh, as great or as little detail as you like. But so, yeah, variance in a nutshell uh, is a measure of how far a set of numbers are spread out from each other. It is one of several descriptors of a probability distribution describing how far the numbers lie from the mean or the expected value. And they continue here. Variance is one of the moments of a distribution. Good. That's one way of looking at it. Um, the very precise definition is going to be here underneath. And it is as follows. The variance of a random variable or distribution is the ex expectation or mean of the square deviation of that variable from its expected value or mean. Thus, the variance is a measure of the amount of variation of the values of that variable taking account of all possible values and their probabilities or weightings, not just the extremes which give the range. So if any of you guys or girls out there understood that, uh, you're a math person, most of us don't, so I've put that in layman's terms for you guys in the bankroll management calculator that I've created for all the members of, uh, of my site. So why use bankroll management? The answer is variance. In a nutshell, variance is the mathematical certainty that shit can and most definitely will happen. This is very much true in poker, also very true in life. Um, in terms of poker, you just really need to know that this huge misconception that's so widely, widely spread around the world is by and large false. The best players don't always win. It's completely ridiculous. All you need to do is look at any big tournaments to know and see all the big names that get knocked out in the first round. You can also look at cash games. You can look at market favorites who lose. You can look at uh, big dogs who then win. It's just all over the place. The reason for this is, again, this term variance. And, yeah, you don't need to know the numbers. You don't need to know exactly what, what that is mathematically. You just need to understand that it most definitely is possible to lose even when you are the markedly better player. It's also possible to lose when you are a markedly worse player, but in this very specific case, you hold a better hand. So, how do you deal with that? Good. Bankroll management. means Segmenting your allotted risk capital as follows. And let's take an example here um, that I put together with you guys, or for you guys. Uh, it's the case where a gambler walks up to you, the hero. Uh, in online poker terms, hero just means uh, you, the player, from your perspective. And this gambler walks up to you and says, um, okay, I'm going to give you a pair of jacks and I'm going to let you deal me a random hand. But we have to play for 1,000 US dollars, which is the hero's entire bankroll. So how does that look? If you go to a program such as Poker Stove, which you guys will find linked from my site, and you enter pair of jacks versus oops, versus one random hand. You go to evaluate. This is going to show you the equity breakdown of your jacks, what you hold, versus any randomly dealt hand. Uh, when that finishes its calculation, you're going to see that it stops around 77.47% uh, for the jacks versus 22.53% for the randomly dealt hand. 
that equates uh, to the following here. We've got win percentage 17.15 that ties the difference. The amount won, as you guys see here, is simply your equity multiplied by uh, the entire pot. Okay? So 1543 is what you can expect in any given move, any given deal, based on a thousand from you and a thousand from your opponent when you have jacks and he just gets any two cards. And you guys play for your entire bankroll. Uh, the amount you expect to win is 1543. The amount you expect to lose is 440, uh, whatever, 444. And again, the respective stack sizes are 1,000 apiece. Now, that's maybe interesting for some of you guys, but what's much more interesting <laughs> is the probability of you going broke. Look at this. You get it in as a 77.47% favorite. Okay, you're going to win three times in four, actually a bit more than that, in the long run. However, you bet everything you have. Right? So it's a good move. It's an absolutely great move. You're a three to four favorite. You've got an equity of 77, over 77 percent. You should make this move all day long, approaching infinity. However, if you can't afford to lose the thousand U.S., you're going to be on what's called scared money, and you will go broke more than one time in five. Your opponent will go broke exactly the opposite, this 77 percent of the time. Now, what are the odds of that? Odds of you going broke are 3.438 to 1, so it means one time in 4.4, you will lose everything you have. Okay? One time in... yeah, okay, the difference is here, that's clear. Um, good. Let's look at the same exact proposition. Gambler comes to you, he offers you jacks, he's going to take any two, and you guys play for the $1,000 that are both in your respective stacks, but you don't do it in one deal, rather in 10 deals. That means you play 10 hands back to back for 100 each. Now look at this, the equity of you winning is exactly the same, the amount you're going to win is exactly the same, the amount you're going to lose is exactly the same, and the stack sizes are exactly the same, but you run it 10 times, not just once. Everything's exactly the same except for the probability of going broke. So in this case, only when you run it 10 times, i.e. you segmented your bankroll into 10 buy-ins, exactly the same scenario, the probability of you going broke here when you run it 10 times is 3,423,846.5 to 1, <laughs> i.e. almost never. Now, the guy that only has 22% or 22.5% equity, he's only going to go broke 12.4 times, actually one time in 13. That means it's also highly unlikely that he's going to go broke with any two randomly dealt cards when it's run 10 times back to back and he only has 22% equity. This is the idea, guys. You make a perfect move here, you make a perfect move here. You're the favorite against this range, which is defined here as any two. Now, here, you're going to go broke one time in four. Maybe one time in four and a half, call it. Here, you're going to go broke one time in over 3,423,000. That's the difference, guys. Perfect play, perfect play. Here, you can lose it all one time in four, and you mathematically will one time in four. And here, you're almost never going to lose it all. That is bankroll management. So, I've written here, in which scenario above would you be willing to bet the farm? If you answer neither, you've probably understood the winner in a week.com F theorem. Uh, and that is as follows. Never bet a man that he can't put ketchup in your ear, because as soon as you do, he'll put ketchup in your ear. And that might sound a bit ridiculous. Um, actually, it is quite ridiculous. But the truth of it is only really, really going to become apparent once you've made a couple of these idiotic moves. Um, Any time a gambler offers you a deal and he himself is dealing or she, yeah, you need to watch the previous videos on so-called mechanics or card sharps, basically cheats, because in that case you're not in a clean game. 
means he's going to give you Jackson. He's going to give himself whatever. You know, queens are better. Uh, any over card and then let, you know, let that board pair. And you're never going to win. Yeah? Because he made the proposition to you. Um, so, again, never bet a man that he can't do what he's betting you. Because as soon as you do, you'll probably, in most scenarios, be paying him, not the other way around. And, yeah, it's, it's stated in this way. Uh, the idea comes from a, a guy that I, uh, I greatly respect, um, someone who keeps things simple but also very clear. And I think this really brings the point home. It's something that, you know, it sounds funny, but hopefully you'll never forget it, i.e., do not let hope or fear blind you to the point that you ignore common sense. If it sounds good, too good to be true, both in poker and in life, it most probably is. And that's where that's where I want to leave this. I think that makes everything quite clear concerning bankroll management, why you, se why you should segment uh, your bankroll, not because you can't make exactly the same move when you have $1,000 on the table or 100 It's simply because when you make that perfect move as a mathematical favorite, you're only going to go broke when you segment your bankroll one time in over $3 million as we have here. Um, whereas if you put it all on the line in one go, you know, you're going to lose it one time in four. And that can really sting, uh, depending on the amount that you're putting on the table and what you can actually afford to lose. All right, so the question now is, how do you then segment your bankroll? And that's why I've created this calculator for you guys. All right, what we've got here is uh, bankroll management. And we've got a term here, a session loss limit, which is potentially new for some of you guys. Uh, it comes from trading. What it means is you need to, in any given poker session that you play either online or live, you don't want to lose more than four buy-ins. And that's that's on the high end when you're playing no limit or pot limit, uh, let's say Hold'em, uh, Omaha, whatever. And 75 big bets if you're playing a fixed limit variant. And that, again, I mean, if you're playing especially only one table in a live casino and you stack off twice, uh, twice say, for 50 big bets, yeah, that 75 is already... Yeah, it's highly likely that you did something wrong after the second stack off in a fixed limit game. Um, so you could even bring this down to 50 big bets as your stop loss, um, or even here, even three buy-ins. That means once you lose three buy-ins, uh, either online or offline, in any given session, it's time to go get a cup of coffee, uh, leave the table, and do something else for a while, and then come back. That's the idea. Uh, we've got here a breakdown of cash games for Texas Hold'em. Now, uh, the buy-in rule is 25 or more buy-ins, table buy-ins, in a full ring setting. That means seven or more players on your table. Or 50 buy-ins or more for six max. If you happen to be playing heads up, which is uh, abbreviated as HU, you really want, especially as a beginning player um, or as a recreational player looking to go semi-professional, you really want to have around 100 buy-ins total. And again, the reason for that is just, as we saw, you know, you're not going to go broke if you're playing well with these, with these levels in your total allotted risk capital or bankroll. Good. So right here, what you guys see is uh, total bankroll per game. Uh, let's say you start off your poker career uh, online with 2,000. And the question is, what can you play in a no-limit setting adhering to bankroll management according to this rule? And what I've got here, guys, is full ring tables, again, 7 to 10 players, uh, playing a short stack strategy. That's going to be covered in the Texas Hold'em videos in the future. This is where you buy in, as you see here, big blinds per buy-in for 20 total buy-ins. I'm sorry, 10, uh, 20 total big, big blinds. And we've got here a minimum buy-ins that you want to have in your total bankroll. So basically this times this is what you guys get. And if the limit's 10, let's say it's no limit, uh, no limit 10, that means that the small blind's 5 cents, big blind's 10 cents, then you've got 1,000 total blinds at that level. So in this example, that would be too much. You're playing actually way too under, or far too below your uh, the limit that you could be playing. 
So 400 total buy-ins you'll have here at NL25, uh, 200 you'll have here at NL50, 100 at NL100, and you can actually play, you're still in the green, all the way up to NL400, basically where the blinds are 2 and $4 respectively. And yeah, then you're at the 25, 25 buy-in mark, and yeah, that's, that's a playable level uh, when you are playing, again, the short stack strategy as defined here. Basically, buying in on any given table for 20 big blinds and then having 20 total buy-ins at that amount in your allotted risk capital or in your bankroll. Anytime here, guys, when you hit the 10, uh, anytime you go yellow or go red when you're using this calculator, that's, that's uh, yeah, that's respect of yellow and red flag. That means you need to be watching out uh, be very careful. You may need to go down a limit so that you don't go broke. Uh, due to variance as we just defined it. Let's say you play a bit, um, your bankroll increases to 2,500, and we'll see if that changes things. Yeah, here you're going to have already at NL 400, uh, 31 buy-ins, uh, and only 12 here. So, you, you know, at that case, you still want to be playing at NL 400, since you, you only have 31 total buy-ins in your, in your bankroll. And that's kind of how you do it. Uh, let's say you run really, really well over time. And you know you you triple up. Now you bought in for two thousand. That was your total bankroll when you first started playing online, for example. Um, you end up tripling up over a few months, and now you've got enough money in your bankroll to play at this level in a one thousand. That's that's how this works. You guys can see here. If you then uh, put here full tilt rush tables, this is a bit, um, yeah bit uh, outdated since yeah, full tilts had a few problems as you all well know um, but if you are playing a full tilt rush uh, table they don't allow you or they didn't allow you to buy in for 20 big blinds which is often the case at most uh, online casinos these days but they had like a I think a 35 uh, big blind minimum per table so the idea is here if you know if you want to buy in for 40 per table and you want to have 20 buy-ins in your total bankroll then you can play at these levels with this capital. Let's bring it back down to 2,000, which I think most of you guys, or many of you guys, will start with. And let's move into what most of you probably know, which is the big stack strategy, uh, 7 to 10 players, full ring. Here you buy in for the full 100 big blinds per table, and you want to have around 25 total buy-ins in your bankroll. So where can you play with 2,000 in your bankroll on full ring, tables where you buy in for the table maximum which is uh, online usually uh, 100 big blinds. Good, you can play all the way up to NL100 but you shouldn't be playing in NL200 because here you're only going to have 10 buy-ins. So you're really pushing it here and already at 20 if you're a new player you may want to go ahead and get your feet wet at NL50 where you have 40 buy-ins, see how you do, learn the software and then move up. So this is the idea, let's say you take a few hits Let's say you take quite a few hits. You drop 25% of your initial bankroll, and now you're only at 15 buy-ins here at this level. And again, this is a good time, anytime you see the yellow, to move down that level so that you never go broke. If you, Let's say you lose again, and all of a sudden you're here in the yellow at NL50. There is no shame in moving down another level. Or let's say you only start with 1,000. Go ahead and start here. Get your feet wet, learn the software. There's really no shame in it. Um, actually, it's to be advised because variance is always and ever presently there. <laughs> you can't get around it. The only thing you can do against variance is to adhere to bankroll management, especially this session stop loss limit uh, of four buy ins. That means, you know, I buy in, let's say, for. Uh, 2,000 my total bankroll, I buy in, I play four tables, uh, big stack strategy, full ring, right, for 100 big blinds apiece. And I buy in here at NL100. Even though I'm yellow, I think, okay, maybe I don't need 25 big blinds, uh, I'm sorry, 25 buy-ins in my total bankroll to play at that level, I think I have an edge. So I only need to maybe have 20 or 15, which is doable with some players. 
Good. So I'm playing my four tables, um, buying for a hundred, and somehow or another I drop three entire stacks. I get it all in three times in a row as a market preflop favorite, and I lose three times back to back. Right? Mathematically improbable, but thanks to variance, <laughs> it happens, and I lose those three stacks. So all of a sudden here I'm at seventeen hundred. And you guys are seeing how that how that drops down. So let's say I do lose those three stacks as a favorite in all of the hands. My bank rolls down to seventeen hundred, and I've only got seventeen buy-ins at this level. Now, this is within one session. It might even be within thirty minutes. What happens is it's not only that my bank roll dropped down and that I'm in the yellow here, according to my to my bankroll management plan. Uh, what happens on top of that is that within any given session, I have a maybe a higher likelihood of going on tilt if I lose three hands back to back as a favorite, or let's say even as just a uh, slight underdog, because I know the math behind it. No, it's uh, it's highly unlikely, and I'm starting to think, okay, maybe the site's funky. Um, who knows, all these kind of different uh, ideas maybe come through my head and I stop, stop playing my A game and I start playing an emotional game. So the idea of this stop loss is not just uh, to, to help your bankroll in the, in the given session, of course, that, that is the idea, but the, the reason behind it isn't just the money. It's very often because when such losses, you know, three buy-ins uh, or let's say 50 big bets, when that does occur in any given short period of time, most players uh, start to play more emotionally. They start to lose it. They they start to get off their A game. And the idea behind this is, of course, both as mentioned, yeah, for your for your bankroll to be nice to your bankroll, and at the same time to avoid slight tilts, so-called tilts, where you start to play emotionally. You start you start to forget logic. You start to just make. Um, spike calls, you're involved in too many pots, out of position, this kind of stuff happens. This session loss limit, when you adhere to it very, very diligently, is very, very good both for your mental state and for your bankroll in the long run. Believe me, I'm unfortunately speaking from personal experience. If you adhere to this plan, guys, um, you're going to be ahead of your competition from the level of discipline, nine times out of ten. And it's also very good for you to not only have a loss limit, but also a win limit. That means, let's say you, you increase your bankroll by four buy-ins. So you come on, you know, again, playing a big stack strategy uh, at NL100, and you increase your, your stack to 2300. Let's say you do that in two hours. You've just made $300 in two hours, so 150 an hour. Fantastic. That's a hell of a great result in any given session at NL100. It's an amazing result. Uh, if you can do that approaching infinity, you know, you don't need to work anymore. Now, a lot of players here at 23, 2400, increasing their bankroll by four buy-ins, four table buy-ins, they play on. And that may be good, may not be good. Um, if the table's really live, if there's a lot of fish, you have good reason to stay at it, fine. In most scenarios, after two hours or three hours, the mental sharpness decreases. And that means that this 150 an hour, all of a sudden, just, just due to maybe you getting a bit tired or kind of bored or drifting off whatever, uh, or variance hits all of a sudden, maybe that drops down to 2100, right? You drop two, two stacks, and now you're thinking, oh, damn, you know, I'm only up 100, and now I've been here for for three hours and now I'm not making 150 an hour but 33 an hour right and now you're on tilt and guess what you know you drop another couple and then you're behind and then you totally throw the loss limit out the window and instead of after two hours of play at 150 an hour you stick around right you drop a couple go on tilt you end up in in a minus situation and a lot of things happen here one is for the beginning player um, the mental situation that means you don't leave your session as a winner. You leave your session as a loser. You're down. 
and that over time builds up. So you guys as new and recreational players, you want to get that consistent win going on, even if it's just a small win. So I've put here the session loss limit of four, let's call it three big or three buy-ins for most players, but also adhere to the flip side. Right, get your positive, get your positive vibe going on. Uh, show yourself consistent wins over time, and that will help uh, your confidence, and it will help your discipline in adhering to this plan. And you guys can come in here and change it however you like. Let's say there's no cap, and they let you buy in for 150, uh, or deep stack table, whatever, and they let you buy in for 200 big blinds. You want to still have maybe 25 in your stack or in your total bankroll, and now you need to be playing NL50 if you're buying in for 200 big blinds at that level. That's pretty much how you play with it, guys. Uh, playing six max, four to six players with the respective short stack strategy or big stack strategy looks like this. Um, let's bring it back to 2000. Right, and if you're playing heads up again, or let's say three player, it's normally a big stack strategy scenario. You buy in for 100 big big blinds per table, minimum buy-ins that you want is at least 75, say, or 100. And yeah, you can play here at NL25. Okay, maybe <laughs> maybe here at NL50, because you do have the 40 buy-ins, but that again, in heads up, can go real quick. And if you're not a heads up expert, yeah, I want you guys to be staying right here. I want you to be playing your big stack strategy on full ring tables at around NL50, maybe NL100, NL200, depending on your allotted capital. So again, as a brief review, this is your cash game calculator. You enter your total bankroll here, and you can update that at any time. Uh, then you, however you want to set up your bankroll management, you enter the total big blinds per table that you play, and you enter here the minimum buy-ins that you want to have in your stack. You can also change limits here. Let's say you're playing at much higher limits or much lower limits. You can change that here. Um, let's say you only want to play NL5. <laughs> then, yeah, you can change it there, no problem. And that's how this works. Uh, this is the cell that you enter yourself. Any of the light yellow cells you can, of course, enter. Um, but if you just update the top cell, I've defaulted it such that that basically automates for all the different tables below. So this here is your cash game calculator. Underneath we've got our tournament calculator. And as a rule, we want about 50 buy-ins per tournament. That means if you're playing a $2 tournament, there's normally 10% of the tournament that is so-called rake. That's the amount that the house or the operator takes. And in this case, it would be 220. So if you're playing sit and goes, you want about 100 maybe buy-ins as a new player, double or nothing, maybe a bit less, uh, multi-table tournaments that are freeze-outs, it's important guys, that means no rebuy, no add-on, maybe you want a bit more at 100 if you're uh, playing MTTs, multi-table tournaments with rebuys and add-ons, it's probably a good idea to have around 150, especially when you're just getting started, and yeah, anything else you can just enter here and figure that out. Um, good, you can yeah, change your tournaments here, um, total buy-ins, however you like. If you are at a $2,000 initial bankroll, you can play uh, here, let's say MTTs if you're a tournament guy or gal, um, and you don't want to play rebuys and add-ons, just freeze-outs, multi-table tournaments. Uh, you can already play at 22s, right? So basically 20, $20 tournaments with a $2 rake. You can you can play at with a healthy bankroll. Uh, going into the 55s, you're only going to have 36 total tournaments that you can play if they all go south, uh, which in multi-table tournaments can happen. Uh, and just as a quick note here with multi-table tournaments, the yeah, we get into that in future videos, but if you're running at 20% in the money, that means that you cash 20% of the time, one, basically one tournament and five that you play, you're doing really, really well in the long term. That's only if you cash in multi-table tournaments. Um, the big money's in the last five spots in MTTs, uh, sit and goes, uh, basically all of this we cover in the tournament section. But just as a heads up, don't expect better than, yeah, maybe 20 or 30 percent in the money finishes 
and your return on investment is highly, highly dependent on good old lady luck, your skill, uh, and your respective edge against your opponents. Again, the idea is not if you're the best in the world or the worst in the world. It is simply uh, you need to play in games, either cash or tournament, where you do have an edge, where you're better on average than your opponents, and also where your bankroll allows you to play so that you're not on, as Johnny Chen called it, scared money. All right, so that's for tournaments, guys. Moving on down here, we can look at cash games for Omaha. And we've got here um, full ring and pot limit Omaha, uh, buy-in rule 50 or more, uh, and 75 here if you're playing 6 max, just as a general tip. And again, you just update that as above. Underneath here, we've got fixed limit games, and there are two ways to look at this uh, in the fixed limit scenario. Again, you see here your total bankroll at 2,000. Um, big bets, not big blinds, but big bets uh, per buy in is here 25 for a full ring setting. Again, 25 also for uh, shorthanded. Uh, seven stud, I've got here 25 as well. Um, with Texas Hold'em and Omaha, I mean, you can buy in here for 20 per table. That's also fun. Um, we'll get to that here shortly. Minimum buy-ins as follows. So if you're kind of thinking in terms of big bets, this is the way to do that. Um, many people don't think like this. They're not thinking in L10 as in a pot limit or a no limit scenario. They're thinking, what is the total big bet, right? Um, that means here it's going to be 50 cents for the small bet and one dollar for the big bet. Here it's going to be one dollar for the small bet, two dollars for the big bet, all the way down the line. Here is going to be a so-called 510 table where the small bet is five and the big bet is ten. And yeah, a so-called 1020 table would be then here. So depending on, you know, if you're thinking of buy-ins as big bets per table or just total big bets in your entire bankroll, you can do it either way. There's actually no difference between this setup and this setup. I've just noticed that over the years, um, people have different ways of viewing this and if you you know if this is more how you think then go with it no problem if this is more you think you know total big bets in your in your bankroll then go with this one and let's say you're just playing full ring um, Texas Hold'em games maybe you want to have about 300 big bets in your total capital that means you can play all the way up to a 3-6 game so a small bet is 3 big bet is 6 you can play here with total big bets of 333 in your $2,000 bankroll.